The year was 1961 when U.S. President John F. Kennedy announced the ambitious goal of sending an American safely to the moon by the end of the decade. Eight years later, Neil Armstrong became the first to set foot on the lunar surface. More space missions followed, including the development of an international space station and reusable space shuttles, now retired. In recent years, the race to space seemed to take a back seat as the United States, Russia and other countries tightened budgets and set priorities closer to home. That is, until now, with more countries and more missions to Pluto, Mars, Jupiter and beyond. Later, we'll talk with a former astronaut, a leading NASA innovator and a space historian. But first, CCTV's John Zarella takes us on a journey through space and time. Three, two, one. Liftoff at dawn. The first test flight of NASA's new Orion spacecraft capped off a remarkable year for space exploration. This is another step on the way to getting humans to Mars, but it shows you with the things that have been accomplished just over this last year, the critical importance of that international collaboration and cooperation. International achievements were certainly the cornerstone of 2014 as more nations demonstrated not only the desire, but an ability to fly the heavens. None was more impressive than the European Space Agency's Rosetta spacecraft. It deployed a washing machine sized lander to the surface of a comet for the first time. So we can't be happier than what we are now. <laughs> we definitely confirmed that the lander is on the surface. It didn't go perfectly. The lander bounced off the surface before finally settling down. China continued making strides in its moon exploration program by sending an unmanned spacecraft on an eight-day mission around the moon and back to Earth. The U.S. Space Agency's $671 million MAVEN spacecraft went into orbit around Mars. India joined the Mars Party, too, putting its first interplanetary probe into orbit around the red planet, but at a fraction of NASA's cost, $74 million. Space exploration can be unforgiving. We were reminded of that once again. Private companies hoping to expand space travel and capitalize on the new frontier suffered major setbacks. Virgin Galactic's Spaceship Two crashed during an October test flight in California. One of the pilots was killed. Virgin Galactic plans on taking space tourists about 100 kilometers above the Earth to experience weightlessness. 700 people have signed up for the flights at $250,000 a seat. A week earlier, a fireball on a launch pad. An unmanned, privately owned rocket heading on a resupply mission to the International Space Station exploded on liftoff. The setbacks are not keeping private companies or governments from continuing to press forward. The year ahead promises to build on the past, and in some cases, nearly a decade in the past. NASA's Dawn spacecraft launched in 2007. In February, it will go into orbit around and begin analyzing the asteroid Cirrus, which is about the size of Texas. The agency's New Horizons probe has been traveling for nine years, much of it in hibernation to save power. Its wake-up call was unique, although the sentiment was likely lost on the spacecraft. English tenor Russell Watson sang the Star Trek anthem, Where My Heart Will Take Me. It's been a long road. New Horizons is now 4.6 billion kilometers from Earth and making a beeline for Pluto. The dwarf planet is so distant, pictures even from the Hubble Space Telescope are just a blur. In July, New Horizons will fly by Pluto and send back images that could revolutionize our understanding of the planet. In the spring, a U.S. astronaut and Russian cosmonaut will embark on a one-year International Space Station mission to see how weightlessness over a long period, like a Mars mission, would affect the human body. We need to have a better understanding um, about how the human body behaves uh, for longer periods of time in space. And, uh, the space station is a great uh, laboratory to, to figure that out. China is expected to head back to the moon sometime in 2015, perhaps with another lander and rover. This and other unmanned missions are a buildup to an expected 2017 flight that will return lunar samples to Earth. 
Humans are still taking baby steps when it comes to space exploration. But for the first time, we are seeing the beginning of a sustained presence. Not by just a couple of countries, but by many hoping to carve out their own space in the new frontier. John Zarella, CCTV at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida.